Mr. Parker, I presume? Dr. Cobble, delighted to make your acquaintance. Allow me to introduce you to Andrew Arlington, the mayor of our little community. Very happy to meet you. Thank you, sir. I'm very glad to meet you. There's no time to lose, Mr. Parker. We'd best be on our way. The sales brothers have delivered your luggage. There's a telegram for you. It's in your room. Dr. Cobble tells me you're interested in stars and comets. Comets? I guess your visit has something to do with Holly's Comet. Quite so. In three nights' time, we shall be able to see some wonderful sights. In three nights' time, you say? You'll see for yourself, Mr. Arlington, and you won't believe your eyes. You've convinced me. Well, here you are, all set to get to work. I'll show you to your room. I'll have to leave you, my customer. Won't wait. Just like the worthy citizens of my little town. Have a wonderful visit, Mr. Parker. I reserved the big room on the first floor for you. Tell me if you need anything. Don't worry, I have everything I need. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you again. Absorbent cotton and surgical spirit. Let's leave them here. Now, let's see. The camera, a tripod, the lantern, the map of the area, but... Oh, thank goodness. They didn't forget Boliskin's original drawing, the one I purchased at Christie's. I leave my things in this trunk for the moment. From Sales and Brothers London to Mr. Parker in Dr. Cobble Estate. Apologies. Stop. Have no more photosensitive plates. Stop. Try to purchase some your end. Stop. Tuesday, February 12th. I at last found a young villager willing to guide me through the forest for payment. Wednesday, February 13th. Good God, what a sight to see. The stars seemed a rifle shot away. This place must be a window to some other dimension. This evening I will take my material. Thursday, February 14th. This child of twelve is remarkable. A great deal brighter and livelier than the village children who seem a sorry lot. He held the torches while I drew new constellations upon the map. Undoubtedly inaccurate, given the position of the river. I have named them Octopus, Stalker, 
They are quite frightening. I have noted the place. I'll be there when Halley's Comet passes, and then... If the child was 12 years of age in 1834, he's 88 today. There's a chance he's still alive. The town records will have the information. appears to be keen on literature. Let's see. If Stones Could Speak by the Marquis de Chamfre. A Hubertus the Bold translation. The Seller Treatise. So many books. Expecting the new forms for the animal census, and the mayor isn't even here. February 13th. Good God, what a sight. The stars were no more than a pistol shot away. That's curious. The word pistol has been crossed out and replaced by rifle. And a handwritten note. Truth sleeps beneath appearance. J. Keats. Interesting.
the blackboard. The blackboard. You are at last, Mr. Parker. I've been expecting you. Oh, don't be surprised. Passing scientists invariably pay me a short visit. Of course, they're a rare breed around here now. Not like in the old days. But you don't want to hear all that. Allow me to introduce myself. Tobias Junk, keeper of the archives and records, at your service. There's probably nothing I can tell you that you don't already know. You're wrong, Mr. Parker. I may know your name and profession, but not the reason for your visit. I'd like to consult the birth register. So, your interests are not limited to the stars. I hope I may be able to quench part of your thirst for knowledge. But remember, there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Now, who the devil wrote that? Shakespeare. Excellent! So, Mr. Parker, you like to read? I like nothing better than a good read. Works are my passion, Mr. Parker. My most precious companions. Silent, discreet, sometimes filled with mystery. I must let you get on with your work. Fortunately, there weren't too many births in 1822. According to the register, there are three still alive today. Curtis Hambleton, William Coldstone, Thomas Greenwood. Satisfied? I believe I've found what I was looking for. There are times when believing is not good enough, Mr. Parker. Sometimes we must be absolutely sure. Take Illsmith, for instance. For many years the locals believed in the old legends. Did that make them true? I have a number of documents on the subject. Fascinating. That's a subject I'm very keen on. My library is full of such material. And I'm not talking about a mere single room. Oh, no. A lifelong study, you know. There are those who would dearly love to get their hands on some of those old papers. But they'll need to be smart. They do say there's no such thing as a perfectly guarded secret, Mr. Jug. Think of Oedipus's Sphinx. Well, you're close to the mark there, Mr. Parker. But I'd better let you get on with your work. Come back any time. The records are open in the afternoons. I'm usually at home in the morning. My house is just right of the post office. Just ring whenever you want. I'll tell you some interesting stories. Most interesting. I don't know how to thank you. Just promise to pay me another visit. Glad to have been of help. Oh, by the way, 
If you're interested in local history, take a look in the next room. If you want to talk, I'll be at home. Tobias Jug. Let's have a look. No Parker. Jug, born of Jeremiah and Suzanne. Maiden name Smith. And under S. Smith, of course. Zeke. The list ends there. Silas Sprague quit the village in April 1809, leaving four children. What's this? A deed of sale. The belongings of Boliskin sold in public to the highest bidder in order to pay for his passage home to Great Britain. pair of broken binoculars. Would Jug be spying on somebody? Papers of no interest. A magnifying glass. Births in 1822. Greenwood. His house is next to Dr. Cobbles. Coldstone. South of Jug's house. Curtis. In the fishery near the harbour. The photographic plates haven't arrived with the rest of my luggage. Summary of Boliskin's book. I met a 12-year-old boy willing to guide me through the forest. What a sight. The stars appeared to be a rifle shot away. He held the torches while I drew new constellations. I named them Octopus, Stalker. Who was that boy? There must be a register of births for that period. Where can I find the town records? There were three births. Forgive me for bothering you, miss. You're not bothering me, Mr. Parker. Oh, there's no need to look so surprised. Ilsmouth is such a small town, and news travels fast. I'm Gloria Tilton. You do, sir. No need to serve me, son. Name's Donahue. Jed Donahue. You that Parker fellow? Yes, but how? <laughs> Old Jed knows a thing or two. It was the doctor told me that a young scientist was coming to visit. Now don't you fret now. 
I can keep a secret if I have to. What have you got to say to that? He's gonna win the shirts off our backs. This isn't my day. It never is. I'm paying for the drinks this time. Darn right. Set him up. What'll it be? Some information, please. Does this look like a library? What are you drinking? A beer. That'll be one dollar. Be with you right away, sir. No problem, Mr. Hamilton. That'll be delivered tonight. Oh, I spoke to Miss Gilchrist. She got your package. Can I help you, sir? I'd like some photosensitive plates, please. Well, just hold on a few seconds while I check to see if I have any. You're a lucky man! Well, they do say if anybody sells it, Meyer does. Got two boxes left. There's one. Ten dollars for three plates. I'll take them. My advice to you is to try them first. I've had them for quite a while, so they aren't exactly brand new. But that's a fact. Daytime, night, outside, inside. What is it you're wanting to photograph? The stars in the night sky. Well, you be careful. The emotion's kind of old. Tell you what, you take a few shots of whatever you want to photograph and see what sort of results you get. If those plates aren't perfect, I'll give you your money back. And if they're okay, well, you can go back and buy some more. Mr. Hamilton, Curtis Hamilton, 76 years ago, a British scientist, Lord Boleskin. Don't mention that name to me. Bad luck and trouble. I led him around for three nights. I carried the torch, the rifle, and I saw the... the thing. I didn't remember. He'd drawn a map. I took him to the cross. I don't mind telling you, 
I was scared. Later on, I refused to go with my father to pray to the stones. So my father threw me out. My brother Wilbur cursed me. And now I live in squalid conditions. Take Boluska. Get away from this region, mister. The comet's coming back. It'll be here in three nights, and that thing's coming too. Wilbur said so. So just get away from Illsmith while you've got time. Why? If you saw what I saw, it was on the third night, in the forest near the Calvary. The English guy was drawing. Then the thing appeared. I'd pay any price to forget what I saw. Now, get lost. Shoo! Go on, find somewhere else to mess up. Say, Mr. Parker, Mr. Arlington, the mayor, told me about you. Welcome to Ilsmouth. I'm Sergeant Baggs from the local police. Glad to meet you. I'm looking for a cross. Maybe you should try the cemetery. We call it the dead center of town. <laughs> you get it? I'm looking for a cavalry in the forest. I can't help you there, and I don't advise you to wander in the forest by yourself. It's easy to get lost in that forest. I wouldn't even go there with a map. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh, duty calls. I've got to run those layabouts out of town towards the clearing in the woods. What have they done? They're gypsies, Mr. Parker. Sneakiest chicken thieves you ever saw. I'm not going to wait for them to strip the town bare, no sir. They're out of here. Surely they have some rights. I decide who has rights around here, Mr. Parker. And no stranger is going to tell me how to do my job. You stick to your science. I won't trouble you again. But come now. Mr. Parker, just read my lips. Stay out of my way. Thank you, sir. Hey, you, the fortune teller. Just shut up, okay? 
Now, you bunch of greaseballs, I want you out of my town, and I mean now. Mr. Parker, adieu. notebooks. These butterflies really are magnificent. I can't get our last conversation off my mind. Have you found something? Not yet. But I hope to shed light on a few interesting facts. We'll discuss them later on. written by Boniskin. E. S. T. The rest has been rubbed out. My information points to a calvary deep in the forest. I must learn its precise position on my map. Remember Gloria. Always keep your head up high. Yes, Aunt.
Let's use the surgical spirit on the cotton. Useless. I was sure of it. The clue is not in the picture, but beneath it. North, east, beast, four by two, stars. That's where the cross. I have to pinpoint the position of the cross on my map. How's photography going? How's business? Just fine. Now don't forget to test those plates I sold. Don't worry, I'll try them tonight. By the way, how well do you know the forest? Not really. Why? I need a guide for tonight. Thanks for the tip. Do you know Wilbur Hamilton? Lucky not to meet them. You make them sound like a heap of trouble. Trouble is a nice way of saying it. Come to think of it, you already know Wilbur. The man with the hood in the general store this morning. Yes, I remember. Well, that's business. You don't pick your customers. At least he pays, which not everybody does these days. You can take care now, Mr. Parker. Goodbye, Mr. Meyer. Ah, Dr. Cobble, I'm glad to see you. Well, Mr. Parker, is the room satisfactory? Couldn't be better, thank you. I need a guide to lead me through the forest tonight. Forest? 
Well, don't count on me. My rheumatism, you see. I wouldn't dream of imposing on you, Doctor, but I have no idea whom to ask. Go in here and see Nathan Tyler, the lighthouse keeper. People speak well of him, but take care all the same. Take care? Well, he drives a tough bargain, I believe, so don't let him skin you alive. I hope you have a map. Otherwise, I understand. Thank you, Doctor. May I offer you a drink? Holy cow, no. I run the Temperance League with Miss Pickard. We're trying to get this den of iniquity shut down. I'm so sorry. I had no idea. To be honest, Miss Pickard bullied me into it. And I'll admit I don't care too much for Zeke. Ah, the unstoppable Miss Pickard. You understand perfectly. I have things to do. See you later. Indeed, Doctor. Is that Nathan Tyler? No, that's Thomas Bishop, a fisherman. Lives in the house in the harbor. First one you see when you arrive. Is there something I can tell you? No, or, or rather, yes. I'm looking for Nathan Tyler. He'll soon be here. He want to visit the lighthouse. No. Are you familiar with the forest around Illsmouth? So so? Why? I want to go there tonight. I see. You must be the astronomer. I don't think you'll find anyone to take you. I was told that Tyler... Hmm. It's none of my business, but uh, you want to be careful of him. Yes, I know. I've been warned about him. His prices. No, not that. He's a strange... Shh. It's him. You got it. There's a guy looking for you. What for? I'm told you know the forest well. Shall we have a seat? to do some hunting maybe? Get yourself a plump hare or a duck? Not quite, no. Actually, I need a guide for tonight. I want to go to the Calvary in the forest. Hmm, that's quite a way. And I don't know if I remember the way leading there. I have a map. A map? Well, I wouldn't rely too much on it if I were you. I'll take you to the Calvary for twenty dollars. Twenty dollars? Isn't that a tiny bit steep? Wait a minute. 
We have to cross the Washington River, you know, on a cold night right in the middle of the forest. If you don't like my price, mister, I... Parker. John T. Parker. Why didn't you say so? I'll take you there for nothing. Well, let's make it five dollars for my expenses. We'll stop by at my place for something to eat. Then we'll get ready and go. Okay? I'll think it over. Benjamin. And if it ain't the Hambleton slime bags. Move it, Ben. Stop that. Leave Webster alone. Stay out of this, Bishop. I've been wanting to get me a Webster for quite a while now. Why, they're really laying into him. Why don't you do something to stop them, instead of making inane comments? How about it, Webster? You like that? Want some more? Let him be. That's enough. Mind your own damn business or I'll bust his nose. Sorry. Thank you, sir. I'm taking you to the drugstore. You did the right thing, mister, but you'd better be on your guard from now on. You come over here. You're a photographer, aren't you? News travels fast around here, Miss... Mary Matthews. I run the drugstore with my father. He's nuts about photography. Did you find what you were looking for, Mr. Parker? Yes. Thank you. My father is also a keen photographer. Now that should keep him alive. Mr. Parker, I'm Jonathan Matthews. I hear you're a keen photographer. I have a dark room which you're more than welcome to use if you want to develop your plates. You did a fine thing chasing off Benjamin and Obed. May the devil take those boys. I'm grateful for your offer. Come whenever you want, Mr. Parker. Hold on to your horses, Mary. So you're back on your feet. Thanks to you, Mr. Parker. Without your help, I... 
I know you want to go into the forest. If I can help you... Could you find your way to the Calvary? I have a map. We can try. That'll be my way of thanking you. Very well. We'll meet in an hour outside the town hall. See you later then. Let's see what you brought. Okay, we have everything we need. I know this place very well. Let's go, I'll carry the tripod. Webster is friendly. He left so quickly, however, that he forgot to give me back my tripod. Luckily, I'm fairly gifted as a handyman. Here, it's perfect. Fine, that seems to be holding.
My tripod's none too stable. There, that should hold it in place. If I took off that wrapping... Fine. I'll be able to take some photos. There's a passage that way. Fong Yui, Mili Wan Yav, Cthulhu Rabbi Hold! Look up there! We are being observed! Fong Yui, Mili Wan Yav, Cthulhu Raila, Wang Lia Nale Fatang! Parker, you have signed your own death warrant. I, Narakamos, tell you that in two nights, Cthulhu will reign once more. Poor Parker, so young, and already in the next world. There's a passage that way. Fong Yui, Mili Wan Yav, 
Cthulhu Ryla Fong Lui Mili Wan Yaf Cthulhu Ryla Wang Lia Nale Fatang Fong Lui Mili Wan Yaf Cthulhu Ryla Behold! Look up there! We are being observed! Parker! You have signed your own death warrant! I... Narakamos tell you that in two nights, Cthulhu will reign once more. You're exhausted, been overdoing it, blood pressure a little high too. You need a good long rest. Out of the question, Doctor. Running the risk of a heart attack, so no excitement, you understand? Take this prescription along to Matthews right away. They're pills for your heart. Careful now. At the slightest twinge of pain in your left side, swallow one and fast. You got that? And no reckless pranks. You're young. But I'm only a physician, not a wizard. Doctor, there's something I must tell you. I was chased by an Indian. An Indian? Apart from Natawanga, who hides out in the forest, I don't see who it could be. There was a certain Naramus, I seem to recall, but he must be well and truly dead by now, if you meet him. Ask him for the recipe for his elixir of eternal youth. I'm not joking, Doctor. Hmm, that's what I was afraid of. I'm not a psychiatrist, you know. What you need is rest. 